True confession time. We have been in a building process and our project behind us called the Terrace Project. I actually thought it would be done by today. In fact, I thought it would be done by the end of January. I apologize for the parking challenge this morning. I apologize it's taken so long, but there was this deal with permits from the city last fall. And then there's this thing called rain that continues to happen. When I asked uh, our lay person who's kind of chairing our building project here, uh, what, when are we going to be done? He always gives me the same three-word answer. Pastor, it's construction. <laughs> and that's meant to explain it all. Here's what I know about Create for Community. Create for Community is something that God does. It's one of his incredible gifts. There will come a time when he, he calls all followers of Jesus to heaven, and there will be this wondrous community there. That will be easy. That will be awesome. But, but here on earth, it's a little bit trickier to navigate. There, there, there's a greater challenge that's involved. There's ups and there's downs. There's, there's opportunities and there's obstacles. But God still invites us to be part of creating for community, of his desire to, to build relationships with him and with each other. That, that's why I love the theme verses we've used the, the last couple of years. And if I choose the purple insert in your order of service, take notes on this morning's message, especially to join me reading these two great verses from the Bible, from a book called Hebrews uh, in its 10th chapter. Please join me together. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approach. Since God is the great creator of community, let's first go to him in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You create us to live in community with love for you and each other. As we look at your word, build our community spiritually strong and spiritually formed. We praise you for your presence with us. We praise you for creating us for community. Your name I pray. Amen. In building community, there's something we need to remember or it'll just become too frustrating. It's construction. Isn't that kind of a great phrase to use? You, you hit a rough patch in, in your marriage. Maybe you see to remember it's construction. We're, we're building something here. We're, raising your kids becomes challenging. It's construction. There's stress at work. Relationships are facing a little bit of this. It's construction. And we as a church, we're, we're not a perfect church. We're a church under construction. God is at work. This morning, we're going to look at three kind of construction realities that, that happen when you're in a construction process. And then what are some community building responses to those realities? Here's the first reality. It's messy. It is absolutely messy. For the first couple of months, all I wanted to say was pardon our dust. And now it's just pardon our mud. <laughs> Especially if you go out this way, it is just absolutely muddy. And... When you do relationships with people, it gets messy. It gets muddy. It feels like you're just stuck in this mess and, and you wonder, how, how do I get through this? Well, that leads to construction building reality. You navigate through construction by building with the love of God. God's love is what touches and transforms. And notice I said God's love. Love for most Americans is like getting on a roller coaster ride just based on how you feel. Either you're up or, or you're down, but you better keep your seatbelt on. But God's love, it's at a whole different level. Jesus, the night before he dies, says these words to his disciples after he washed their feet of all things. Oh, look what he says here in John 13, verses 34 through 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus kind of ratchets up the love level. He says, as I have loved you, 
That's a love that the next day will involve a cross. If you thought washing feet was high, love on a cross. Love that sacrifices. Love that gives of oneself. That, that is what holds community together. That's what builds its depth when storms come. I could throw a thousand threads on a table. But it's just a collection of threads. It even just looks messy. But when those threads become woven together, that they become a masterpiece. They, they, they become a piece of fabric. Each one of us is a, is a thread of life that God is using to, to weave together. That we are interdependent. Dependent on Him and each other. And He seeks to connect us. That there might be depth and, and life to who we are and who He's making us to be. This happens as the church begins. We heard it read earlier. Listen again to Acts chapter 2, verses 44 through 45. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Now, Americans can't stand those verses. We, we think they're a bunch of communists or something going on back then. Don't, don't worry. They, they weren't communists. They were community builders. They, they recognize that, that to build depth in community, to, to build a strong community, you have to love at Jesus' level. And at that level, when you see a need and you have the resources, you meet them. E even if that's sacrifice. And when you have a need and others have resources, they will add to that as well. Every time you demonstrate the sacrificial love of Jesus, just like our house builders did in Mexico. Every time you demonstrate that, you are weaving a thread together. You are building a stronger community. You are giving it strength and, and depth. Construction, it's messy. Whether you're trying to, to build something, build a relationship, build a community. Here's a second construction reality. It's memorable. Th things happen that you remember. Some good, some, some maybe not so good. When I think about the good, I think about uh, our, our people's generosity. That in raising the funds to, to do this project out here, we, we committed as a church to give the first 10% away. Uh, $100 on every thousand. To help people in Burundi, the Batwa people through the Global Care Alliance. To help the East County Pregnancy Care Clinic to open an area in South Bay. So the value of life could be lifted up. To reach 50,000 plus children in India. That, that, that's memorable. That's what I'll remember. The not so good? Well, that would be the rain, of course. It just seems to rain, rain, and rain. I was up there for preschool lunch the other day, and they were doing their prayer. Johnny Appleseed song. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the... We sing the sun and the sun from now on. But we need some dry weather, okay? That, that, that's been a bit challenging. Every once in a while I sit with a couple about to get married, they, they will describe to me the perfect wedding. And I'll kind of smile and listen to them, and then I'll try to, as lovingly as I can, say something like this. There's a slight chance something may not go as you anticipate it. Hopefully it will be something that uh, you will look back on in 10 years and, and get a good laugh from. When I think of when Sharon and I got married, there were a few things that didn't go as we had anticipated. One of them was my fault. I had wanted to wear a suit and Sharon said, no, you're wearing a tux, everybody's wearing a tux. I said, okay, I will go get a tux. I found the perfect tux. It was in National City. It looked awesome on paper. And then we went down two days before the wedding to pick it up. It was worse than Billy Porter's Oscar tux. <laughs> Though it did have pants, I will give it that. It did have pants. I remember telling the guy, hey, I'm not getting married in this. This tux was made for people to get buried in, and I'm getting married. And so we walked out of the store without the 10 tuxes we needed. I think there was a tux store, I think the name of it was Gingham's, and it was up in Oceanside. We got married in Vista. 
And they used to advertise that they work Tux Miracles. And so we went in immediately up there, less than 48 hours before our wedding, and I said, I need a Tux Miracle. In fact, I need 10 Tux Miracles. And sure enough, the guys started calling around. They had different stores. They had one from Long Beach that was getting brought down by somebody. He had a friend who worked at the store in Phoenix. He was coming over to San Diego. He had the boy size Tux that we need. He brought it over. In less than 48 hours, we had our miracle. And let me tell you, I looked good that day. <laughs> Sharon always looks great. And amid the mess of wedding prep, we learned a good lesson. God does provide. God does have this. You see, sometimes in the mess, God will do something memorable. And if we are wise, we will remember that. And we will hold on to that. And we will build lives from that. that that's really the beauty of what happens when you make it memorable. That leads to the second community building response. Build community moments that last, that will be remembered, that will stand the test of time, that, that will be be markers in your life's journey, in, in your relational journey that you can look back on, that you can draw strength from. It happens in the early church. Oh, look what happens here in verses 42 and 43 of Acts 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Love built on God's word. That, that, that was their foundation. That's what they were banking their lives on. They dug deep into that word and found great strength. They found great power. Another follower of Jesus named Paul uses a, a body image. Look at what he says here in 1 Corinthians 12. The body is a unit, though it's made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks or slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Remember those threads woven together? Well, Paul's doing that with the, the, the body now. Different parts come together. DNA united together makes you, you. Your DNA and each cell of your body connecting together, uniting together. It makes you, you. In a church community, God desires to make connections, to unite people together. So we're going to do an experiment right now. First, look at the back of the head of the person in front of you. Take a few moments to look carefully. You've been looking there already today. If it's not a down, that's fine. Don't wake them up. Now, you, you may not know this, that this, this could be your potential best friend in life sitting in front of you. You could have deep conversations. You, you might help each other go, go places where you have never been before. And so that you might have the opportunity to appreciate that, I'm going to count to three, and then everybody's invited to turn around and see the person behind them. One, two, three, turn around. I thought you should check out the head of the person that's been looking at you at the whole time during the worship service. We, are, we, we gather together to connect, to go deeper. People who kind of identify themselves as members of Christ Lutheran Church, when I ask them, well, what's, what's the primary reason why you came? It's almost typically the same answer. They, they found friends. Friends in the school community, friends in the church community, they were welcomed here. I taught one class and one lady came one time. She came the first time and it may be just have been given me this message. When I asked about people's experience with the church, she said she had been here three weeks in a row and nobody had talked to her. Want to know why people don't identify with Christ Lutheran Church? Well, that would be the reason when we're not friendly to people. 
That's why we provide time up during our service to say good morning to the people around us. That's why we provide time out there. That's why we're doing our building project back here. Why? We consider community important. We want to invest in it. You see, the third reality of construction, it makes a difference. What, why else put up with the mess? Not, not, not just to make memories, but to make a difference. We weren't bored. When, so we said, hey, we got to go build something. We aren't into monument building, but we are into community building. We do believe that God has called us to that task, to establish a place where, where there's relationships. And that leads to this community building reality. The people who remember you tomorrow are the people you do life with today. So how's that going for you? It's the community love that makes a difference. Look what happens here in Acts 2. Every day, every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. They met every day to build on that foundation of love, to build on that foundation that Jesus had come into the world and had died and risen again. It's the form of the towering cross that defines the power of community for us. The, the, the vertical pole, a reminder that, that God had to send his son into this world, into the depth and the abyss of my sin, to pay a price I couldn't pay. Because he longs to be in relationship. But it's not just there. As Jesus hangs, there's the, the crossbar with his arms extended wide, a, a reminder that what Jesus did on the cross isn't just between God and me, but between God and us. That, that Jesus wants to reach out and embrace the whole world to be in a living relationship with him, to experience his great love. And that's why Paul describes it as a body. Look what he says here in verses 26 and 27. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. One reason I love being in this community is a piece of wisdom from a proverb, either from Swedish, Danish, German, or your favorite nationalities background. It says this, shared sorrow is half sorrow. Shared joy is double joy. And that's been my experience in this community. Shared sorrow, and it kind of, it, it just dissipates. The, the, the weight is taken off shoulders. And sheer joy, it just multiplies. It spreads. It overflows. I discovered this morning it even shouts. <laughs> because that's what it means to be in community. When it comes to creating for community, it turns out we are always under construction. It's messy. It's memorable. Ultimately, it makes a difference. And for us to pursue that community, what we build on the strong foundation of God's word. I don't know much about construction, but with all the delays we've had, I've learned we're at kind of the foundation pouring stage. And if your foundation is weak, it's not going to last. And so we build on a solid foundation of God's word. Uh, Bank of America had this ad for a while. It, it said, Life is better when you're connected. I think the goal was for online banking, but really when you think about the church, it applies very well to church life. Life is better when you're connected to community with Jesus. It still gets messy. Hopefully it's memorable. Most of all, it'll make a difference. In your home, in your life, in your workplace, in our church, in this community, in this world. Let's go to our great God in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for being the creator for community in our homes, workplaces, community, and church. 
where there are strains, where there are difficulties, where there's just a mess that needs to get fixed, God, make that happen. Give wisdom and discernment, always, God, in all of our interactions, even right now today. May Jesus be present and his name lifted up. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.